Hey guys, welcome to another lesson of Pro Teachers Do. Today I have with me Gene. Hello. <laughs> and today we yesterday and last time we went over Captain Marvel the end. This one's going to be the start of a three-parter going over the three um, X-Men the end books. First starting off with Dreamers and Demons. This is Chris Claremont and Sean Chen giving us the swan song as he tries to wrap up a lot of story points his own way anyway. And of course, some of the stuff you're going to be like, ooh, you're going to win. Especially when it, they, the way they resolved the Summers brother, which right around this happened, is around the time we got Vulcan coming about. Okay. Yeah, now think about that a second. They decided to give an answer here. Right at the same time in canon, they give a completely different answer. <laughs> now, we'll give What's some, that? Um, right. Yep, what? <laughs> Nothing. I was making a joke. <laughs> Oh, I'm oh, sorry. But, and the other thing, now I will give Claremont this. He at least clearly did research and looked into other people's arcs that weren't his own. Right. I give him props for that. So, yeah, let's dive in. But first, this cover by Greg Land. Jeez, I can already tell the street images, stock images he's reusing again. <laughs> it's always the same images with him, isn't it? I guess. Now, you know about Craig Land, right? He's the one who did stuff like Ultimate Power. He's a guy notorious for his tracing, especially from porn art. Oh, Craig Land? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the cover. I, that's the cover here. Craig Land. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. We open up with a young girl um, who um, who is the daughter of Bishop and um, uh, Desperate. Her name okay. is Ilya Bishop. And okay. yeah, this is already one of those plot points where you're like, wait, Bishop and her were a thing? Yes, they were. <laughs> As we get, as she's remembering a whole bunch of summaries of the stuff with the X Men, all everything over the years, how all the stuff dealing with in space and everything, um, how different teams have shown about, um, and then we see yeah, desperate and what what to her being born and everything, and then eventually, apparently though, we find out Eliandra had gone insane and the Empire was falling apart, so desperate had to go back and try and fight her sister. All right. <laughs> so right off the bat, that's where that's where things are starting. Eliandra has gone insane. And so, so let's let, let the, the Shi'ar Empire and Death Bird's hands, okay? <laughs> well, we have well. It turns unfortunately, we find out something crueler happens to Death Bird. Okay. But yeah, so we see, turns out she's not, um, Ilya is not in board, uh, on Earth. She's on a, in a, simul in a simulator. And um, she's basically being shown you know, what's going on out there. There's a Kree uh, command dreadnought out there. And it's deploying an assault bar. So she gets ready to go into some action. Trying to figure out what to do with the, the Kree. Oh, and the person she's talking to, it's binary. Carol Danvers again, <laughs> but she was very oh, different yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So we see the Cree here as they're coming forth, um, you know, towards um, this portal as a bunch of other figures are coming through, and uh, they're just saying, um, like, what am I looking at? Hounds, enhanced power being and power beings, gen engineered and behavior modified by slaves. When at all possible, they prefer using the X Med, of course. So, oh, one of them is um, Multiple Man. All right. With Slipstream there. And looks like they're, they're, they're there to keep an eye on things that there's a negotiation going on. But when they see um, they see this pod, well, then all of a sudden someone starts to attack um, Ilya. As you already see, this starts off a very convoluted right off the bat, doesn't it? Pastor Claremont. 
<laughs> oh, by the way, that's Nocturne from the um, Exiles. What, the girl attacking her? Yeah. That's the okay. um, daughter from another universe of Nightcrawler and Scarlet Witch. Ah, I figured Nightcrawler giving she was blue, so. Well, it could have been Kree for all you know. It could be, yeah, it could be Mystique, but. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, and there's also, um, um, oh, what's her name? Um, um, Banshee's daughter, um. Oh, what was her Banshee, name? The Irish oh, guy. Siren, Siren, Siren. Oh, yeah, I know her. So, yeah, all of a sudden, then the Kree are taking that orb away while all this is going on. And, um, <laughs> yeah, basically, it's been taken. Now it's under attack. So, basically, Leah, this is her first time actually dealing with the X-Men. And, unfortunately, she's getting brought up on the tractor beam. Turns out there's a war scroll, uber-powered um, super scrolls. And they bring the ship down. Basically, this whole thing is opening up with a big attack as, what was in the new cocoon? Jean Grey. Now, by this point, remember, this is post-Morrison's um, run, run. So, Jean was believed dead still by this point. Okay. Not that she ever stays dead. <laughs> well, she stayed dead a long time, if you recall. She stayed dead until um, Joe Quesada left. My point stands. <laughs> Yep, and they're being attacked some more. And then, um, uh, yeah, they basically then pick up um, Nocturne, fly out of there as, um, again, the ship is trying to get out of there. Well, no, that's her ship trying to get out of there. Everything's just going to hell. And, oh, yeah, that was the brute that was attacking. Yeah. So they get out of there as the planet explodes. But yeah, they, so yeah, there's um binary. She's the ship's computer. Okay. And we, and they're able to get out of there thanks to Gene's help. But because Gene does this and shows the Phoenix, everyone notices this. Um, as everyone is now realizing the Phoenix is back, which now things are going to change. Oh, and as you see here. Um, you see, apparently Storm is in this iron lung type thing, and Wolverine's there taking care of her, yeah. her and he doesn't want to join in for anything. <laughs> yeah, I do Wait. remember seeing this, this part a little bit, because I've always been like a big Storm Logan fan, so when I saw this, I was like, oh, great, and then you look at her, I'm like, damn it! <laughs> now, she does get into action later. She does get into action later. <laughs> Clearly, this was done to take Wolverine off the board and Storm, both of them. But yeah, so of course they're all like realizing this is her. For, for, this is really her. Like this is hard. The stories they tell. You're supposed to be the end of all that is. Not today, hopefully, I and mean, hopefully not ever. What I am though is kind of cold. Any chance for some clothes and maybe a bath? <laughs> So, yeah, and then there's <laughs> Nightcrawlers on board. Um, so, and... Um, With a bad... Yeah, yep. <laughs> and that was the first issue. Kind of a convoluted start, like you said, typical Claremont. He doesn't just set up and do much setup. He just dives right in, doesn't he? Of course, I'm liking the art. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. The art and the colors are very nice. Sean Chen actually has done two different The End for characters. He's done the X-Men and he did Iron Man. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we see that, yep, Scott and Emma are officially together with kids. Now, I never liked this, Perry. <laughs> I never liked it. I hated this. I still hate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, give but, me more to this Scott Summers. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is um, where am I playing with the cards he was dealt? Mm -hmm. But yeah, so now, now to try and figure out what to do and what does this mean? Um, 
the, and um, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, they're, he's talking with someone else. It's like, good night, sir. Click. What did he say at the end? He for once, don't let and let it be to tell and, and let it be to us to tell us our daughter's dead again. That was harsh. <laughs> They're her parents. Yeah, but yeah. at that point, her parents were still alive. This was before, in the main continuity, the entire Summers family was slaughtered. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, that happened after this. But, um, but yeah, so, yeah, having a nice moment between them as they then meet up with their kids. Um... So yeah, just a nice moment then when um, Xavier shows up. Oh, for heaven's sake, does no one in the X-Men, X-Men community understand the concept of privacy? Go away, old man. You're not welcome here. I'm going to sit with the children. She's your ex-wife, Scott, and he's your mentor. You deal with this. Yeah, that's very <laughs> in character. <laughs> yep. So of course, G- and Scott goes to meet up with the Stepford Cuckoos. And use Cerebra to communicate. Meanwhile, um, Kitty is running for mayor of um, of Chicago. All right. <laughs> and, to be, and to be fair, this makes a lot of sense for her. She's always been the most grounded of them. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean. Oh, and I love this. Not- What's with Rachel? Oh, sorry, I just love this. What's with Rachel? My mom just called. Say no more. I'm afraid your mom's just the first. Why am I not surprised? Rachel, Kitty, go away, Scott. <laughs> like, I ho- and we hoped. Uh, I hoped you would want to help. Mom doesn't know where she is. Does and do you? Not yet. Assuming you find out, do the, the X Men have any way of re- reaching her, rescuing her, do anything to alter the status quo? No, not yet. When that changes, Scott, call us. Until then, I have Kitty's campaign to run. Taking no prisoners tonight, are we? <laughs> Don't you start, Kay. I'm not in the mood. Okay, I don't blame Rachel, can you? It's like, she's been dead for so long. I got enough shit going on. I do not want you to be roped in on this off chance. I fully endorse Rachel here. (laughs) I love it. She's your mom, right? And there's nothing I can do to help her. Ever thought she just wants to keep you safe? I wish she hadn't called. We were better off believing she was dead. Again, Claremont has a great handling of these characters, even ones that he hasn't handled in years. So, of course, they reach out to um, Cyclops, who's dealing with a bunch of terrorists um, and everything. And, yeah, so Skylar, X-Corp, Mumbai, never needed their help before. So, yeah. Um, oh, my, oh, and this is Irene. If you remember, this was, she was from Cable and Deadpool. Okay. Yep. But but turns out we don't realize that there's someone hit, um, hidden inside of her. Here's a patient planning may at long last bear fruit. Gee, given it's like it's a cable, I wonder who it could be. And of course, um, he approaches um, um, Wolverine. He basically tells him to touch grass. <laughs> But Storm wants to go and help, but it's like, but Ro, and, and what, Ro? And you should have told him, what, that you're dying? Yes. Bull. Once upon a time, Ro, I burned up in the flaming sun, remember, and got brought back to life. Some rules don't apply to the likes of us. I wish they did. <laughs> All right, Logan, I can't even feel the touch of your hand. I'm not being cruel, darling. It just isn't your time. From your mouth to the goddess's ears? Absolutely. Okay, okay, so, and apparently Rogue and Gambit figure out a way to finally be able to be intimate without anything happening. I guess they found that collar from uh, Slave Island. <laughs> uh, nope, I think she has learned to control her powers. But, of course, we get a training simulation. <laughs> uh, what 
what you think, rude boy? The lo- and, and what you think, rude boy? This a lock you can pick? And Jesus plows right through it. Yeah. It right, looks Not like. Too, and it looks like <laughs> yep. So we see Domino and uh, and Domino and Sinister. Apparently, both both dead. Sinister, no, Domino. Sinister hit her with a mortal wound, and she still managed to finish him off. So as far as they think, they for a moment they think Sinister's dead, but it's all rude. Of course it is. <laughs> if you, it's if not you notice, that easy you to see, Yep, you see a bunch of his other disciples are with him, including Dark Beast. Mm-hmm. Courtesy is a given, my dear boy. Respect must be earned. Do you think me so clueless that I wouldn't find out about your arrangement with the Kree? That was business. That was not our arrangement. For years, I provided you with prime merchandising, including the occasional X-Men. All I asked in return was the first claim on the person and the person of G. Gray. Is this any way to treat a valued client? I understand. We may have been in error. How can we do and make things right? You know what I want for your compatriot, and, or your com- and you know what I want, or your compatriots will suffer for it even more than you. Ah! Yeah, typical Mr. Sinister. Yep. Then we see stuff going on with um um with uh, not and with Nightcrawler, Kurt, and um Gene catching up on everything, and apparently Nocturne has been in a coma after all that's happened out there. Ilea is just trying to understand this, and she's so used to just um, the cart. And so all this is just coming all at once. So Binary is trying to you know, help explain things to her. And Aww. basically, yeah, those are an evolutionary of the brood who are supposed to be dead or actually extinct. So how are they back? Who knows? But now they're wondering, like, basically the GR Empire has been chaos ever since the monster. Ma- oh, ever since the events of um, was, um Sandra Nova. <laughs> oh. From Morrison's run. So it was not long after that that Ilyandro started to become more insane. So now they're trying to figure <laughs> out what to do. And um, also... Kurt is then asking, like, forgive me, child, but who are you? I am Ilea. My father was X-Men, Lucius and Lucas Bishop. And your mother mentioned, you know, yeah, it's death. We then cut back to Eleandra. And it turns out she had a son with Xavier. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. And um Basically, yeah, like I said, um, the sun went where Nova, and they're trying to, and yeah, they're out of realizing what to do about the Phoenix. But it turns out then someone else is, is within the um, Shi'ar Empire is ready to um, do their own thing to undermine her. Basically, you can definitely tell Claremont has a bunch of spinning plates going on here. I agree. It is very busy. I'm not entirely sure that's a good thing. <laughs> It's not, trust me, it becomes a mess, an other mess. And I'm just breathing through a bunch of these, you know, just simplifying it. Hold on. But yeah, so um, we didn't see um, that one, what appears to be that one guy um, that was helping the Kree out um, coming in. Mm-hmm. And then they meet up with uh, with Slipstream. They meet up with Sinister and reveal that, oh, that guy had been taken. So um, I was just having a chat with my client. He's satisfying a pet curiosity of mine about whether I or not non-terrestrials are susceptible to the venom of some of our native fauna. In this case, the stinger jellyfish. I'm more impressed, actually. For most humans, this dose is quite fa- fatal. Sinister, I must protest. We had a deal, Slaver, yet, yet you brokered Jean Grey to someone else. A, a most regrettable error in judgment. You think so? I've heard differently. Turns out it was a member of the Shi'ar in disguise. Name was um, Cerise. A member of the Imperial Guard, and then she's taken over by one of the other uh, members of, or, or almost taken over. She's putting up a good fight against all of them, including Omega Red. 
But you see this one woman who uh, that appears to be Storm, but it's Shaitan utilizing a clone body of Storm. Oh, Lord. Can we get yep. Storm her own body, please? <laughs> mm -hmm. By trying to save your friend, you thought you were serving your empress. As your reward, you've been just been betrayed. You lie. I report directly to Eleandra herself. Precisely. Crack. So yeah, now of course, um, turns out they were working. He uh, that she was working with Kurt, but now she know he, he knows she's dead. Right. Oh, so actually, I take it back then. Apparently, this isn't um 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 doctrine isn't his. Uh, no, uh, this seems so complicated. It's hard to tell. I think this is supposed to be um um. Another part, yeah. So this is this is still her from Exiles, and then he has she has a half sibling named TJ. So okay. now, so, so okay. So again, stuff like this where it just jumps around and everything. You know what I mean? And apparently, he's been mm -hmm. an actor up until this point. Why? It's a lot safer. Hey, it's better than, and, oh, and look at this. Apparently then Jubilee is his um, producer. <laughs> yep, okay. and, he, she's in, and she's interacting with Kurt's wife, um, Kymri. And I gotta say, it makes sense. She was a, always a California girl. This makes sense for her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at least she had to get killed off anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, and then now she's getting a, she's been getting visions of her parents, nightmares, and she's been having them back as far back as she can remember. So yeah, so obviously Gene and um, Binary are talking this all out, and something malevolent is doing this. But of course, it made clear that despite all this, um, you know, and that um, you know, Ilya is a good kid, regardless. Um, we then see um, back in, in Africa, they're bringing in some of the others from um, um, Cable's group. And we see Hank is there okay. meeting up with some of the others, helping them out. Um, These were long. Interesting. <laughs> I like this look, don't you? It's not bad. It, it just makes it look very Native American. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> mm hmm Oh yeah, and we find out about um um oh what's her name? What's her name? Um oh Moonstar Daniela Moonstar. Oh Moonstar. Yeah. yeah. And it turns out she's been having um nightmares and everything. And basically again, a lot of stuff is trying to resolve stuff. In this case, she has been kept in this hallucination, this dream. And for a moment she gets an image with um Ron and uh, and where's Ron? Uh, is that your name? But she keeps on getting gassed every time this happens. Dang. Oh, and there's X there's X23 with M. You remember who M is? Okay. M, M. M. She was a member of Generation X. <laughs> Or, or, and and um, basically, yeah, they're fighting off this one person, and oh, she, it's an ambush, so she's heading in. Now, she's fortunately um, 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 pretty durable. <laughs> oh, and apparently that was um, Psylocke that was attacking them. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 that's not Psylocke, that's Psylocke Sage. No, I think I, no, no. That's not Psylocke, like that's Sage. Sage. That was one of Claremont's created characters. Oh, okay. Yep. And, but like they were stopped by Iceman. Like it is. Oh, okay. It is. But oh, but yeah, we have Bobby back before they gate him up. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to see him do some action hero stuff. So. <laughs> mm hmm. Trust me, all of this is mostly set up for what happens in the, until the big bang of an ending. 
be a ne- they're going to have to interrogate her. Not a bad cover with Sinister, but yeah, so it seems they're starting to go to hell for the um, um, for X Force as their ship crashed down. Um, heads on over and finds Domino pinned down. And also in there was Warpath. Unfortunately, some of the other ones didn't make it, unfortunately. So we see um, a Pharaoh, Warpath, Boom Boom, um, Shatterstar. And um, someone tries to, sh- to snipe them. But then Shatterstar and Irene get hit by something. We don't know what yet. And then that um, Bill, you know, Sh- uh, Shante, uh, Shine shows up, leading to a fight. And this is where we're going to start having the body count build up. Because there wasn't enough already. <laughs> yep, they're putting up a good fight against Sinister's team. And Boom Boom even stops them. Until, but then she's um, being co- um, connected by Meltdown, um, being shot. But yeah, basically now Meltdown and uh, not Meltdown. Boom Boom is. Oh no, sorry, that's Meltdown. Meltdown is was her other name. I didn't know she went by Meltdown. But basically, yeah, she's already she's already dead. And then um, Domino tries to stop them, and it turns out. Um, um, Terax turns out he had sh- he had shot them earlier, and what happened? Well, first Apocalypse is forced out of Irene, and then Shatterstar uh. stabs Cable. And um, why? Well, turns out he was taken over by a Technorax, completely assimilated. This is like an and- overbooked wrestling match. But he's just hitting their finisher. <laughs> yep. And and then Warpath is then taken out. And it turns out if you notice earlier in Irene, she was shot. Now this blobby guy hold taking over boom boom. Apocalypse kills them. But it turns out because he got hit while, while in Irene, it carried over to him. So now he's taken over by the um phalanx. And is totally taken out uh, of the organic nanites, and well, he's turned into fragments. So Apocalypse is out for good. That That's a lame way to take him out. <laughs> but because his virus is in um, cable, that means the nanites jumped over the cable and take it, took him over him too. So yeah, you see what I mean? This just by went by boom, 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 way too fast. It is, it is. Oh, Richter ends up giving getting them out of there by sending a bunch of them down, and thus uh, Domino's right saying we should go and um, stop them. We need to avenge them. Now the rest of the X Men are unaware of all the stuff going on. Yeah, they're just trying to still figure out what to do next. We yeah, talk about a slaughter, right? I mean, this is called the end for a reason. Uh-oh. Oh, look who's back. Look who's Black back. Hmm? <laughs> the Black Queen. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Moonstar is getting um, images from Hela. And okay. um, basically being told to be the next Valkyrie, that she was supposed to be a Valkyrie. Meanwhile, Rain, Rain is um, howling at the moon, of course, meeting up with um, so many other people. Everyone is we're just seeing the day in the life at the um, or the X Men, and then they're trying to figure out what to do, what what happened with Sage. They're still trying to figure that out, but they have no clue still. And then all of a sudden, oh, it turns out though, one of the people there was a um, war scroll in disguise. And nobody picked this up? No one noticed? No, it? no, no. They're actually well disguised. Yeah, but wouldn't someone realize something was up? <laughs> oh, and um, um, 
One of them is coming for um, Wolverine and Storm. Hey, is uh, that Yuriko? No. Uh, yeah, that's Yuri and Yukio. Yukio, so. Yep. And it's, re oh, geez, trying to drown her. Damn it. This, this is all a big ambush. This is all a big ambush of the War Scrolls. But, the, and some of them are doing good, some of them are not. But then once they see it, I'm um, like, and night like this, Sherry, I couldn't spend it without you. What a lovely thing to say. Bam! Now, who the hell are you really? <laughs> <laughs> yep, learned a long time ago how to, how to spot them because of mystique. <laughs> but storm uh storm may be um not doing well but she can still bring down the lightning <laughs> boom <laughs> some help logan if you please i'm a little bit stuck <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so they're fighting and, and the other team are fighting off the war scroll and scroll scroll and gets a little help from Sage. Turns out Sage knew this was coming. That's why she was acting this way. You're done, mutants. You first, bub. Ah, Lockheed! Oh, boy. Again, just more and more attacks going on at the um, school as things are, again, just going to hell. And we see Madeline Pryor. Um, um, Strife. And I forget who the third one is. Oh, Genesis. So I see what I mean? Oy. Things just go right after a slow build up, it's now a bloodbath. Obviously. Basically, the X Men let their guard down. Finally, what? North Star. <laughs> yep. And yeah, the entire school is being attacked. And look what they did. They made an X. They just, and they, this time, they just want them dead. They don't want them beaten. They don't want them humiliated. They just want them dead. And um, so, yeah, they're trying to do what they can to get everyone escaped out of there. Um, what? Um, so yeah, they're all using these um, teleportation to get them all out of there. Um, we didn't see one person that Rain had been protecting, uh, but I'm not a kid anymore. Basically, this one person who's a bit of a sheltered kid, but he's trying to do what he can to help. So he's running up a good fight against them. As Genesis makes his way in, and then um, you see... An illusion of someone of havoc who's supposed to be dead, but was that was the illusion gone? He now uh, the kid, the poor kid has been um well put back into a I'm sorry I'm sorry so Genesis wipes him out, but then the rest of the X Men inclu including uh, Juggernaut who's actually helping also Colossus here is not actually um Pietro this is Kid Colossus. Oh, Someone okay. else like him, but not him. <laughs> oh, and that other one, I don't know if you remember that one in the um, hijab, that's um, Dust. Oh, I remember Dust, yes. Yep, so again, everyone's trying to get everyone out of there before things blow up. Everything's just, again, going to hell in a handbasket. So they're trying to tra teleport everyone else out of there. Um and, and, uh, and again, so Kitty is there to help out. Everyone is there. And again, just a whole bunch of fighting going on. But it turns out some of these guys are not actually. Uh, now, Madeline is Madeline. She's been resurrected and everything. Like, And she's like, this was my husband. This was my life. None of you had any right to take that from me. Miss Jean, if you return home. I'm not. I'm Jean. I'm the first wife. I'm Madeline. I'm the one who's got pledged to remain faithful to forever. I'm not your enemy. I mean you no harm. 
that makes one of us as she kills Dust and then takes the hijab to go into hiding. Oh, that is cold. Didn't even give her a chance to even fight back or nothing. I know, right? All this so that <laughs> Madeline can be hidden in the hijab. <laughs> That's, not That's the only reason. That's the only reason. But yeah, so Juggernaut tackles Stripe and basically starts to say, you know, stuff like, I've been part of the school's history from before the beginning. I spent years hating, hating Charles Xavier, and he never hated me back. He helped me heal myself. You both, and we both built something good here. No way do I let anyone bring it down. But it turns out it's a war scrawl, and turns out. They are, um, it's a sac, they sacrifice himself, blowing on himself up, taking out Juggernaut. They These expect me to believe I got the Juggernaut. <laughs> yep. And Rain is there. To, unfortunately, she gets caught in the blast because they had to slam the door closed. They're getting their way out of there. Again, so many die as boom! They saw the fireball in Washington. Yeah, I, I can see. I can see why Juggernaut didn't survive that. Would you take something more than just a regular explosion? I mean, especially it's if he the has scrolls. his helmet on. You know, I can understand, but he had the helmet on. <laughs> yep. Oh, and that's uh, Calypso and Callisto uh, and and, uh, and I know Magneto. I know Callisto. I know Callisto. Yep. And, um, and again, remember, this is also all before No More Mutants, obviously. House of M, right. Yep, but yeah, that's the end of this part of the first part. Oi. <laughs> so what did you think about all that? We're ending on this part, and then we'll do the next one next. But what did you think of all that? If I had to sum it up, like I said before, it's like an overbooked wrestling match. Everybody's fighting, but nobody has a purpose. I exactly. like Claremont's really, but this, how do I put it? It's like, I don't think, at least so far from what you've shown me, there's no story here. It's just action, action, action without a purpose. And I like a good fight, but damn it, give me a reason. <laughs> Well, it's, but the thing is, it's a lot of buildup, and you gotta remember that this is the first of three parts. But there's a reason why this mini did not do that well. This isn't a buildup, though. That's the problem. It's just, it's like I know. Mortal Armageddon. It's just throwing everybody into the fray with an excuse plot. Exactly, a very convoluted excuse plot at that. Well, an excuse plot by definition is convoluted in most of uh, uh, Sometimes like excuse plots can be very simple, too. Way. But yeah, I, I mean, like it does start. My favorite writer, but yeah, he's done better. He's done better. Yep. Now, it will it start to get a bit more understanding. I won't say better, but it does get more understandable as we go forward. Now, the artwork, though, is good. Yeah, we're good. It's okay. But I will say this. Like I said, I think the problem is Claremont was asked to ramp up so many plot points, so many loose ends. Set this in the future, of course, and he was given a lot of pairings and ships and everything that he never created that other creators had left him with. I can see that. Not so that I it really can... mattered. I mean... <laughs> yeah. And he had to include so some of his favorites, of course. Of course, he had to include. And, and, yep. I know, yeah, but that was it. Because of course, he had to include Nocturne. He loves Nocturne, and he had to include Sage. Sage has become one of his favorites. I'm surprised Mystique didn't show up, given how much he likes Mystique. <laughs> But I think the problem is, is that, again, we're focusing on the wrong character. The characters we're focusing on are characters we have no attachment to. Right, I agree, I agree. Or, I mean, I mean, if we focus on Kitty from the beginning, that'd be fine. But I think that's the thing. This book is all over the map. It is. And there's not really, to, to your point about Kitty, there, there doesn't seem to really be a focus character or a point of view character like most stories you're following a particular character through the mm -hmm. events here yeah it's just 
Boing a 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 boing exactly. That's exactly what it is. I mean, again, stuff like Kitty Kitty running for mayor makes perfect sense. I like that Jubilee going into uh, being a um, being a producer. Heck, Nightcrawler being an actor that actually makes sense, doesn't it? It does. Yes. Better than him being the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> him actually going into the priesthood would have been interesting. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm referencing Chuck Austin's horrible uh, arc, but um, but yeah. So yeah, we'll be going tuning into the next part though. I so, and as we go over, um, what is it? Heroes and martyrs. How many more are going to die? A lot. Yeah. We'll see you all on that one. <laughs> Take care.